Let's talk more about the situation in Cape Town now with the, the Good Party's caucus leader in Cape Town, Suzette Little. A very good evening to you, ma'am. Grateful for your time. So the Good Party was among the first to welcome the suspension of MMC Malusi Boy. But was this news a surprise to you? Not the news of the fraud. Good evening, everybody. Um, thank you for inviting me. The news of the fraud wasn't new. Uh, 2020, um, an issue was brought to our then MPL, Brett Heron, and um, that matter was raised with him then. What I find very strange is that the mayor is now saying that he's heard it for the first time when councillors have been raising these issues in council itself with questions, debates. In many cases, councillors are, are, are forced to leave or put out by the speaker in council when they raise issues. And the mayor refuses to listen to the opposition party. Had he listened to uh, Councillor Adams, this matter would have been resolved even earlier. Now, what is, is more concerned is the fact that the police had to raid the city offices. Now, the mayor is saying that he's going to cooperate. Why was it necessary for them to raid? Did they not ask the city? for information. And did the city cooperate? Clearly not. Clearly not. So we are very concerned that the, this had to take place in, 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 in housing. Yes, there are other issues that one is um, concerned about. But I do believe that the mayor, it's not the first time that the mayor is aware of the okay. corruption. It's been brought to his attention in council. For those of us not in Cape Town or following the, the city politics, Suzette, tell us more about the issues that have been raised in council by the opposition parties as pertains to alleged corruption in the housing department and is the understanding that the MMC himself is involved? Well, that issue, the detail of the issue was not brought to our attention. What was brought to the mayor's attention was that there were, there were certain uh, um, um, allegations, there were certain concerns with regards to a specific tender. That tender was highlighted to the mayor. Now, the unfortunate part that when you are in the city of Cape Town and you highlight issues to the mayor or to the council, you are either blocked out, you are either put out, or your time is up. Or they use their majority to have an item passed. Or they just simply ignore you. Now we are faced with this today. We are faced with a very serious allegation within a directorate that could have been resolved, that could have been dealt with in a better, in a better manner. And so, yes, we are of concern. Um, I do believe that there are other issues. I believe that there was another matter in the newspaper where Councillor Adams was given certain um, instructions. But where there's one, where there's two, clearly there's more. And so we are waiting to see the outcome of what present, is presented to us today. And it's important for us to say that as we are having this conversation tonight, there hasn't been um, much detail given about the actual case under investigation, who is or is not believed to be involved. But what I'm trying to tease out here is whether, um, from your experience as an opposition party in the city of Cape Town, MMC Boy is himself regarded as an upstanding leader or has all has been looked upon um, with a degree of suspicion well from the opposition party there has been certain suspicion but that's all that it was at the time suspicion but i want to understand how has Ms. Uh, uh, councillor boy been suspended because the mayor's delegation allows him to appoint and dismiss not suspend and here the city is going to waste time but mayor should actually tell us how he suspended this councillor. Is the councillor going to get full pay? Is he still a member of the executive? Is he still a member of the council? What is the suspension all about? And by what authority he had to suspend councillor Boy? And just lastly, then, you've mentioned that uh, this is not, by your account, the first time that Minister, or Mayor, excuse me, Jordan Hill Lewis, would have been hearing about alleged corruption in the housing department. Yes, like many of us, he may or may not know the full extent or full scope of the police investigation. What then would you want as far as action possibly against him if he was aware of allegations and did not act and is now saying he's hearing for the first time? As a councillor, 
in the city of Cape Town. We are faced with so many statements that are made, these little glib statements that are made that actually mean nothing. He impresses the public by saying he's done this, he's done that, but it really has no substance to it. Here today again, he claims that he didn't know. Yet if you go back on the YouTube record, you will see and you will hear councillors raising, the opposition councillors raising issues. Councillor Adams was actually thrown out of council. At one stage, we didn't even go into the in-committee council because Councillor Adams refused to go out of the, out of the council. They, they, they changed the rules to suit themselves. And this is unfortunately what leads to the situation that we find ourselves in. Once governance leaves a city, we have a problem. We have just seen the city getting a clean audit where it says that monies have been accounted for and, and, and things are all in order. Yet it seems as this tender proves otherwise, that monies have been spent but no services were delivered. So what do we actually believe in the city of Cape Town? Do we believe a clean audit that says all monies have been accounted for? Or do we believe this action that has been taken today where it says that monies, hundreds of millions of rands, has been spent but no services delivered? This is of concern. And really the Auditor General must hold the executive mayor as well as the accounting officer to account in this instance. Suzette Little. Good party caucus leader in the city of Cape Town. Good to speak to you. Thank you.